So in today's video, I'm going to be previewing Bradford City versus Accrington Stanley. And then in the second part of today's video, I'm going to bring you guys my Game Week 19 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers. So please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get a comment in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match and how would you line up as well would you go with the 4-4-2 or would you go with the 3-5-2 that we've been playing over the last couple of matches I'm really excited for this match against Sacrington Stanley I'm liking what I'm seeing and hearing from Graham Alexander recently obviously we're coming off the back of a brilliant 5-1 win in midweek against Barnsley in the AFL Trophy but all things considered it was a very weak Barnsley side and we've had back-to-back -back lead defeats so far under Graham Alexander we're not far away from the relegation zone as well so we're 19th in the table we really do need to to push on. We've lost our last four league matches. Accrington Stanley recently coming off a brilliant 2 0 win against Wrexham. They're now up into the playoffs, and I think they've got a brilliant manager there in at John Coleman. But make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you're new as well, and let's get into it. Channel memberships are now cheaper than ever, with tier 1 costing just 99p. Tier 2 has been reduced from 3 99 a month down to 1 99 a month, and tier 3 has been reduced from 8 99 a month down to just 4 99 a month. Your support, as always, is massively appreciated. The more members that we have, the better the content will be. Enjoy the rest of the video. If we start out then with the current Skybet League 2 table, my team Bradford City, we couldn't sit 19th in the table. After 18 matches, we've got 5 wins, 5 draws and 8 defeats, scoring 20 goals and conceding 27. That leaves us then on, on a minus 7 goal difference and 20 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a loss, a loss, a loss, a loss and a draw. Then last couple of matches, then being a 5-1 win at home to Barnsley in the Football League Trophy, a 4-2 defeat, a at Notts County, a 2-1 defeat at home to Barrow AFC, a 2-1 defeat at home to Wickham Wanderers in the FA Cup first round, a 3-0 win at home to Manchester City's under-21s in the Football League Trophy, a 2-1 defeat away at Sutton United, a 4-1 defeat away at MK Dons and a 1-1 draw at home to Wrexham AFC. If we compare that then to Accrington Stanley, they currently occupy the final playoff spot in 7th position. After 18 matches, they've got 9 wins, 2 draws and 7 defeats, scoring 27 goals and conceding 24. That leaves them then on a positive 3 goal difference and 29 points. Their last couple of matches then have been a win, a loss, a loss, a win and a win. Them last couple of matches then being a 2-1 defeat at home to Nottingham Forest under 21s in the Football League Trophy. A 2-0 win at home to Wrexham AFC. A 2-1 defeat at home to Doncaster Rovers in the FA Cup first round replay. They drew the original tie 2-2 away at Doncaster. They also had a 3-1 defeat away at Accrington, uh, sorry, away at Crawley Town. A 1-0 defeat at home to Colchester. A 4-2 win away at AFC Wimbledon and a 1-0 win at home to MK Dons. They're no mugs of Accrington. They're a very big physical side. We obviously played them earlier on in the season in the Carabao Cup first round. Drew 1-1 drew on the night, winning it on penalties in the end. A really crazy penalty shootout. I think did we beat them 3 or 4-0 or 4-1, something like that. And obviously they had that really bizarre penalty where the player slipped, kicked the ball like three times. Lewis dived the wrong way. They managed to get up and save it anyway. And it was yeah really amusing to say the least. Obviously, we are now out of the Carabao Cup after losing to Middlesbrough but it was yeah a great away day that one at Accrington but now we're going to get into the team though that I would go with if I was Graham Alexander like I mentioned at the start of the video there is a lot of food for thought coming into this game what's the formation going to be is it going to be a back three I thought we played really well in that against Notts County granted they took the foot off the gas I thought we played really well on Tuesday night against Barnsley granted though it was a very poor side and I think with the way Alexander likes to play a back three back five could certainly work because he likes to play it on the front four and he likes to play attacking football he's not Mike Hughes where we're just going to pass it around the back loads and I think he won't play holding midfielders as your number eight so he'll play wingers in there like we did on Tuesday night so in my opinion I think we should go with the 3-1-4-2 formation where you have a holding midfielder two number eights and your two strikers similar to what we played under Mike Hughes at the start of the campaign and I certainly think this one could work really well in goal then this might shock a few people I've gone with Colin Doyle now I think in the EFL Trophy games, Doyle has looked really good to be honest with you, he's been really assured in himself and while he might not be as good technically as Harry Lewis, why not give him an opportunity in the league because we've seen it too many times this season where Harry Lewis is making mistakes which are costing us goals and Colin Doyle has not done that so you have other goalkeeping options for a reason so why not change it, I would say I'm 99.9% .9 sure Harry Lewis will play every league game from now on up until at least January if not further but 
Let me know down in the comment section down below. Do you think it's crazy for me to want Colin Doyle playing at the weekend? I think obviously it'd be much more a show with the crossing. And I the only think at this moment in time, based on current form and what we've seen so far this season, the only thing that Lewis is better than Doyle at is his distribution. And I'm not being reactionary because Lewis last season was absolutely outstanding and he genuinely won us 20 points. But this year, he's making far too many mistakes. I think even against Notts County, there were a couple of goals where he could have done better with, in my opinion. And I know Colin Doyle hasn't played against the greatest opposition, but why not give him a go? Why not do that? Into the back three then, again, very, very hard decisions because some players are playing better than others at the moment, but again, they're playing in what are perceived to be lesser matches. But on the right side of the back three, I have gone with Jonathan Tompkinson. I think if you're playing a back three, you need some sort of pace in there. He's our only centre-half with any type of pace, so he definitely needs to be in there, in my opinion. And we've not really seen him feature all too much. I know he's a low knee. Graham Alexander's not really a big fan of low knees, but I think if you're certainly going to play a back three, you need some sort of pace in there. So Tompkinson deserves to be in there, in my opinion. In the middle, I've gone with Matty Platt. I've been very impressed with him recently. I'm not really too sure why he hasn't been in the side. I think for me personally, both Taylor and Sam Stubbs needs to come out of the side for this game. And that is why on the left side, I've gone with Kieran Kelly. Now, I thought he was... If you were going to put any type of blame on someone for Barnsley's goal on Tuesday, you could certainly put it on him because he loses the ball in a pretty poor area. But... I feel like Stubbs and Taylor, their performances recently deserve to see them come out of the side. Obviously, you'll need one of them on the bench. But for me personally, I'd like to see a back three at the weekend of Tompkinson, Platt and Kelly with Doyle in goal. And some people might think that's absolutely crazy. And I'm sure you'll disagree with me and let me know down in the comment section down below. But from what I'm seeing and the performances I'm seeing, that is what I would genuinely go with going into this match. Into the two wing backs then. On the right side, I've gone with Brad Halliday. Second half against Notts County. Absolutely outstanding. Gets the assist again for Walker's goal. And he received a lot of praise from Graham Alexander with the positions that he picks up high up the pitch. He's very, very good defensively. He's improving a lot going forward as well under Graham Alexander. And I'd like to see him feature once more at right wing back. On the left side, I've gone with Alex Gilead. Now, I feel like in this formation, this is the best position to fit Gilead in because you're not going to play him as the holding midfielder. That's obviously Smallwood's role. We'll get onto him in a moment. But then as a number eight, I'm not sure that would be Gilead's best position at this moment in time because I'd like to play wingers in there because I thought it worked really well on a Tuesday night but Gilead for me has to stay in the side and I think this is the only real position that you could fit him in at this moment in time with how I would personally like to play this system and I think obviously Rydow not available through concussion Lewis Richards awful in that first half on Saturday against Notts County was at fault for the first goal and got torn apart a number of times by Namane and he's just a little bit slow for me is Lewis Richards he doesn't have the mobility and the agility that I'd quite like in a wing back and I think Gilead would certainly offer that and he's obviously very energetic as a holding midfielder then like I just mentioned Richie Small I thought again he had a really really good game on Tuesday night against Notts County fairly average not involved in the game all too much but in these EFL trophy matches Small just loves kicking all the young players and I'm here all for it he had a good battle with Luke Connell they were both leaving something on him and he always seems to have some sort of an individual battle does Small with another one of the opposition players and he always seems to come out on top he's obviously the captain and I'd like to see him remain as that holding midfielder. Into the two number eights then. Firstly, I've gone with Harry Chapman. It was great to see him get another 65, 70 minutes under his belt on Tuesday night. And I thought he impressed quite a lot. Had some brilliant footwork for our fifth goal in the build-up play. Gets the assist as well for our first goal. Great cross in for Matty Platt. And I think you need a player of Chapman's quality in this side. So I'd start him as one of the number eights. And as the other side of the number eights, I've gone with Jamie Walker. Now again, against Notts County, second half, I thought he had a pretty decent display. And defending isn't really Walker's thing when he has to do the tracking back playing as a left midfielder in a 4-4-2 he gets caught out because he switches off far too much defensively and he has been at fault for a few goals that we have conceded recently but going forward he seems to be offering a lot under Graham Alexander and even under Mark Truman and Kevin McDonald before that I think Walker for me has to stay in this side so I go with him and Chapman as the two number eights and then the two strikers then first I've gone with Andy Cook great to see him back on the score sheet on a Tuesday night regardless of who the opposition are him scoring a goal will do his confidence the world of good and it wasn't like it was a tap it was a brilliant goal from I think just outside the edge of the area you could argue maybe the keeper could do better but he's here with a lot of power goes on the keeper and it's great to see him back on the score sheet and he obviously missed a number of chances against Notts County I think had 11 shots in the end and didn't really trouble the goalkeeper so fingers crossed now that he's got a goal under his belt he can get back fit and firing and scoring goals once more because Oliver is also back now he featured for 20 minutes on Tuesday he's obviously going to be nowhere near fit enough to start in a league game but great for competition to have him back available in the side 
side. And partnering Andy Cook, I have gone with Tyler Smith. Now, I thought last, last week against Notts County was very anonymous, didn't really affect the game whatsoever. But on Tuesday, I thought, scored a brilliant goal. You know, Ash Taylor sends a long ball, and it's not a bad ball, to be fair, but Smith has to work hard to win the ball back. Turns the defender inside out, and it's a brilliant striker's instinctive finish into the roof, and that a great goal from Tyler Smith. And we need to see more of that from him in the league, because I think he's got six goals now in all competitions this season, but only one of them has been in the league. So I need to see Tyler Smith contributing a little bit more in the league, in my opinion, because I think when January comes around, Jake Young returns to the squad, Tyler Smith's position could certainly be under threat. On the bench then for me, it's quite a strong bench. I've gone with Harry Lewis, Sam Stubbs, Lewis Richards, Bobby Poynton, Adam Wilson, Clark Adore, and Viden Oliver. The players currently unavailable then, a Daniel Yugoke, who is going to re require surgery on that shoulder injury, which could maybe see him not feature once again in a Bradford City shirt for a long period of time. Liam Rydow, Kevin McDonald still not back from his hamstring twinge, and also Alex Patterson as well. So on the players you will miss out then through selection will be Harvey, Harvey Rowe, Ash Taylor, Emmanuel Sadebe, Rehan Tuluk, Chisholm Afoka, and Matt Derbyshire. Now then we're going to get into my Game Week 19 at League 2 score predictions. Starting out then with AFC Wimbledon versus Notts County, I'm going to back the away side at 4 a 2 0 win. Bradford City versus Accrington Stanley. Accrington haven't really drawn many games so far this season, but I'm going to go with a 0 0 draw. Colchester United versus Barrow AFC, I'm going to go with a 1 1 draw. Crawley Town versus Harrogate Town, I think finishes in a scrappy 2 1 at home win. Crew Alexandra versus Doncaster Rovers, I think finishes in a comfortable 2 0 home win for Crew. Grimsby Town versus Sutton United, I'm going to back the Mariners at 4 a 2 1 home win. Newport County versus Stockport County, I'm going to go with a 3 1 away win for County. Salford City versus MK Dons, I'm going to go with a Desmond 2 2 draw. Swindon Town versus Mansfield Town, I think will finish in a high scoring 3 2 away win for the Stags, but with how Swindon are so far this season. It wouldn't surprise me if they are the team that do end Mansfield Town's unbeaten run in the league. Tramia Rovers versus Gilling FC. I'm going to back the Gills for a 2 1 away win. Walsall FC versus Forest Green Rovers. I'm going to go with a 1 0 home win for Walsall. And finally, Wrexham AFC versus Morecambe FC. I'm going to go with a 4 1 home win for Wrexham. Derek Adams walking out on Morecambe in midweek to go back to Ross County for his third spell there. And they recently announced the signing of Oscar Threlkeld as well. He was absolutely awful for Bradford. City. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could turn it 80 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 8,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. How would you line up as well? Would you go with a back four? Would you go with a back three? Let me know all that sort of stuff down below. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Thank you all for watching once again. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you all tomorrow for the match day vlog. Peace.